I'd like to welcome you all here on behalf of the MIT Enterprise Forum of Texas and SIM, the uh, Society of Information Management, to a fantastic program on energy storage. We are really privileged to have Professor Donald Sadaway here. Um, I don't, a number of you have had a chance to meet him already, but if you read his bio, uh, it's, he's a rock star. <laughs> Um, you know, he's been recognized by Time Magazine as uh, one of the 100 most uh, influential people in the world. Uh, his TED Talk has received uh, one and a half million views. And so to have him come here to Houston, although I think he wanted to get away from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We, we feel very privileged to have him here. Um, before we get started on the program, I'd like to do a couple of things. Some of you are not familiar with the MIT Enterprise Forum, so I'd like to spend a little bit of time just describing the MIT Enterprise Forum. Uh, then we'll have uh, Cliff Triplett come up here and talk about SIM, uh, the Society of Information Science, because we've done this program together with them, and we really appreciate their support and being involved and uh, to get Professor Sadaway here and allow us to uh, videotape. Uh, so Cliff will be coming up and saying a couple of words about SIM. Uh, we, then we'll have Alan Cordova from NRG, who's one of our sponsors, come up and say some things about NRG, about the company, and about being an MIT Enterprise Forum sponsor, event sponsor. And then I'll bring uh, Yasmin Brown up here who organized this program, and she will introduce Professor Sadaway. So let me start off with about the MIT Enterprise Forum. We are one of 27 worldwide chapters that's associated with MIT and MIT Technology Review Magazine in Cambridge. Uh, our mission is to, let's see, ah, got to turn it on. That will help. There we go. Our mission is to create inspiring and impactful programs about technology, about entrepreneurship, and about economics for the Houston community. And we do this with flagship programs like you see here tonight. We do it with new venture clinics that help startup companies perfect their presentations and their strategies so as they're getting ready to go out and present for money, we can help uh, fine tune their presentations so they have a better chance of getting that money. Uh, the third thing we do is we have networking socials three times a year. So for being an all-volunteer organization, uh, we end up doing quite a bit. I would say, though, that our flagship programs are really our hallmark. And uh, the MIT name allows you to get just some fantastic speakers. So we've had a whole variety of uh, programs in the past on things from uh, the future of fresh water with National Geographic, the cybersecurity threat with the FBI and Homeland Security, regenerative medicine, advances in regenerative medicine with uh, Houston Methodist uh, Research Institute. We've even had one of our programs actually recorded and broadcast on TV, on Channel 8 TV. And we're working on our second TV program coming up in September on innovations of education. And again, we're going to get some fantastic speakers for that. And uh, the Channel H has said, yes, we'd like to record it, and we'd love to broadcast it. So that gives you some indication of the quality of the programs that we have. Um, let me just talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming programs uh, that uh, I think that you'll find very interesting. On April 28th, we are collaborating with BioHouston to have a program on advances in DNA testing as relates to genealogy and anthropology. And Bennett Greenspan is going to be talking about the technology, and we're also going to have Russ Capper interview him about his experiences of starting the first commercial DNA testing company for genealogy in the world. And it was here in Houston. And many of you may not recognize that, but what's happening in DNA testing is really unbelievable. It's, everything's change at lightning speed. And so it's not just anthropology, not just genealogy, but it's also having tremendous effects in medicine as well. But I think that you'll find that a very interesting program. That's coming up on April 28th. 
Uh, in May, we're going to have a program on the future of fresh water. Uh, Texas is looking at making a lot of big investments in water infrastructure. Uh, California is struggling, and uh, in many parts of the world, water is probably more critical than oil and energy. Um, and so there are some real problems coming around the world, and uh, we're going to have a program on that. Uh, in September, as I mentioned, we're going to have a, a uh, program on uh, innovations in education. We're working with Bonnie Dunbar uh, at the uh, University of Houston, who's in charge of the STEM program. Uh, she's also a former astronaut. Her connections in the education area has allowed us to tap into some uh, real uh, great speakers. In fact, we're trying to get Anant uh, Agarwal from MIT, who's the CEO of edX, which is the big uh, MOOC uh, organization, and I think we have a pretty good chance of getting him for that program. We're also looking to do programs on detecting asteroids that are on a collision course uh, for Earth, and we're going to work with the B612 organization on that. Uh, we'd like to do a program on 3D printing. These are, I would say, really in the very initial planning stages, but this is kind of what is on our radar screen. We'd love to do a program on drones, future of drones. And uh, one that's just come up here recently, uh, the founders of Mustang Engineering, who are now Wood Mustang Engineering, are writing a book on creation of that company. And uh, Bill Higgs, was a, who was one of the founders, was a next-door neighbor of, of ours. And uh, I've convinced him that he should come and talk to the forum and talk about uh, what he's going to write in his book. And we'd probably have Russ Capper interview him like we've done with Rod Canyon in the past. So some real interesting programs coming up here in the future. Uh, I would like to point out that we've been trying to videotape as many of our programs as we can so we can share it with the Houston community and have an impact on the Houston community. And that's one of the reasons we're trying to do TV programs is to have an impact on the Houston community and inspiring them about technology and about entrepreneurship. Uh, so you have these program uh, videos that are on our website uh, that I think are just absolutely fantastic. The social entrepreneurship program is the TV broadcast. That's our most uh, watched uh, video on our website and also the global MIT Enterprise Forum uh, website. Rod Canyon said uh, that uh, the program with us was his best interview ever on Compact, performing Compact and running Compact. Uh, again, Russ Capper interviewed him, and it was just a fantastic uh, program. So, if you missed any of these, if you have interest in any of these areas, take a look at uh, the videos, and I think that you'll be impressed. Uh, we could not do what we do uh, with our programs without sponsors. They're very important for us to be able to do TV broadcasts, to do videos, and to put on uh, what I would call reasonably cost events. And we usually, what we try and do is just break even on our events. We, we do not try and make money. We're a nonprofit. But I want to say thank you to our sponsors because they're important for us uh, to be able to do all this. MRE is our top uh, sponsor, foundation sponsor. Uh, we got involved with them with big, the Big Data Program. Westlake Chemical, Houston Business Journal, uh, they've, uh, we, they help promote our programs in the Houston Business Journal. Unleaded Communications, Comcast uh, was a big sponsor for our Rod Canyon program. Uh, Compass works with us every year on the uh, business forecast luncheon, which we sold out in January. Uh, Wells Fargo Advisors uh, has uh, joined us in a, uh, as an advisor, and Pat Green uh, actually participates on our new venture clinics as part of that. Farnsworth and Von Berg, um, Fran Von Berg is here tonight. I see her back there. Uh, she's an active member in the MIT Enterprise Forum, and we really appreciate the support of her business. If you want a good lawyer, go see Fran. Uh, we collaborate with the business makers, uh, Brandit, uh, Houston uh, Patent Law, Dave McEwen uh, supports us, uh, the MIT Alumni Club, Joe Garman, who's our photographer, although my daughter is uh, taking pictures tonight since Joe couldn't make it. Um, and then uh, Cynthia uh, um, is, gonna, is from the Good Writer Association, writes our newsletters. 
Houston Technology Center is very important to us because that's where we hold our new venture clinics. They've been very supportive, and we collaborate with them in every way possible. And I'd also, uh, the same thing with Rice Alliance, and I'd also like to say thank you to Channel 8 because doing programs with them, we've done three programs so far. Uh, they make a really high class recording, edited, and make it uh, very good communication uh, with the rest of the community. So, if you don't see, let me back up a minute. If you don't see your name up here for your company's name, we'd love to see you be one of our sponsors. The MIT Enterprise Forum is a great organization. We put on great programs. You'd be associated with the MIT name. So if you don't see your company's name up there, please, and you would like to be involved with us, please come and see us. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, Darcy Grice, who's our sponsorship chair, is in the back, and uh, she will take all questions. <laughs> okay. Um, I now would like to bring up uh, Cliff uh, from SIM and so say a couple of words about the SIM organization. Yeah. yeah, I'm Cliff Triplett. I'm the current president of our SIM chapter in Houston. SIM, like the MIT Enterprise, is a national organization. Uh, we're the SIM chapter here in Houston. We're about 150 membership, looking to go to about 200. We kind of fluctuate in that kind of number. Uh, we average about 80 to 90 in a meeting, and uh, our three major goals that we have in the SIM organization, uh, somewhat similar to what you have here in the MIT Enterprise team, is first networking, just like uh, this organization. It's a great networking forum. We tend to focus on IT professionals, practitioners. It's really 85% uh, practitioners, 15% uh, kind of tapped max we allow in as uh, vendors or suppliers. Uh, the second big thing we look to is a professional development education. Again, I assume somewhat similar here. We, we try to have similar interesting topics, uh, FBI and uh, Homeland Security was our last meeting, so we have some, even some similar topics. And our, our third is uh, we refer to as outreach. That's kind of giving back to the community. Uh, last year we gave out about $60,000 in money towards outreach programs, scholarships, uh, contribution towards STEM, um, and other uh, community type events. One of the things we've done this year is a greater focus on STEM, uh, and we're kind of moving down the educational uh, ladder. So we're, we're, this year we're focusing more on middle school, high school, college universities. We had gone beyond and gave money uh, to uh, organizations like HTC. We're probably going to pull back a little and try to promote more STEM in, in the education. We are trying to grow our membership in the education community, so uh, those uh, professors or chairs in IT are very welcome. So we're trying to make a special push this year to get those guys in, and we actually offer an encouraging membership rate for those people. And uh, we are trying to represent uh, the industry as it's represented, uh, the IT professionals as it's represented in the city of Houston. So we are a little oil and gas heavy right now, but so is the city. Uh, the, the two groups we're trying to attract uh, to bring more proportional to our organization, education and health. And so we're really trying to attract members in those two fields. And uh, we're very pleased and privileged to be a member of uh, part of this sponsorship. And our sponsorship here was enabled by um, the HMG group, the Hunter Mueller group. And uh, just to give you an idea of one of the reasons why the timing's right, we wish Hunter was here, but Hunter was not able to join us. But Hunter will be joining us uh, on March 3rd. He's holding uh, HMG conference here in Houston. It'll be held at the Four Seasons, and it will talk uh, to a lot of the current issues in IT and IT leadership. Uh, it's not a vendor fair. Uh, I think a lot of conferences, you tend to see a lot of speakers who represent product. This conference put on by Hunter was really designed by mostly our membership and IT professionals. It's what Hunter focuses on. And uh, very few of the speakers are trying to sell you stuff, okay? They're talking more about the challenges they face and the approaches they took to solve those problems. A lot of CIOs and uh, vice presidents of technology, infrastructure, application development. So we thank Hunter. Uh, like you, we're a nonprofit, 
And uh, our events are sponsored by companies, several of which were on your list. Comcast is also a metal sponsor for us. And uh, Hunter Mueller is uh, the one in his organization that sponsored this event for both of us. We thank you. Thank you, Dan. David. Thank you, Cliff. Um, yeah, as Cliff just mentioned, the program tonight, our two event sponsors are NRG and uh, HMG. The, and we could not have done the videotaping without that sponsorship. So I'd next uh, like to bring up uh, Alan Cordova from NRG to say a couple words about being an MIT Enterprise Forum sponsor and also about NRG. Thank you, David. Um, happy, NRG is happy to, uh, honored to sponsor the MIT Enterprise Forum. I think there's a good synergy between the values and the goals of the, the forum and the events here in our company. We're, we value innovation uh, and entrepreneurship. Uh, for us, we see it as fundamental to our approach uh, and really uh, to uh, moving the U.S. energy industry forward. Um, you know, it's an industry where uh, I always tell people if, you know, the Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison were brought forward today. Alexander Graham Bell would not recognize the telephone. Like, we know these iPhones we have today wouldn't see it. Thomas Edison would say, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, we got substations, power plants. It's basically what I did 120 years ago. So we're trying to change that. Um, you know, we are, so uh, who is NRG? We are the largest competitive electricity company in the U.S. Uh, we're a Fortune 250. Um, you might, might not have known that, uh, you know, amongst uh, many of the large companies that are represented here tonight. Um, serving 3 million, uh, I'll show you a map in a sec uh, where those 3 million are, uh, with 3, 53 uh, gigawatts of generation um, across a, a range of technologies. Um, you know, and, and those 50, the 53 gigawatts serve 42 million people. Um, and uh, you know, I think one of the, fo one of the main uh, areas of focus within NRG the past couple of years, in particular um, under the leadership of our CEO, David Crane, has been around clean energy. Um, we've inherited a legacy through acquisitions of a lot of coal and oil and gas plants, um, but uh, we we're really making a push towards uh, clean energy through uh, the construction of solar and wind uh, projects. Um, we're looking to have a carbon capture project in place. Um, we're proud of that uh, 8,000 jobs have been created uh, thanks to our efforts in the past few years. Um, and through, you know, with that, uh, we're investing. Um, it's our, our business, I, I tell people, we, you know, are, are, we are the last owner of assets. We build, own, and operate. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, we, we want to be serving customers for their foreseeable future and really developing a, a legacy of uh, being part of that solution, being part of that clean energy future. So here's where, uh, here's where our plants are. Um, you can see uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of yellow in California, a lot of solar, um, a lot of green uh, up in the Midwest and in Texas through wind. Um, you may not know Texas, is, believe it or not, is the number one wind state, and we are certainly uh, happy to be a part of that. Um, you know, but then up in the east, we have a lot of coal and oil and a more traditional. Uh, gas is uh, just under half of our uh, fleet. Uh, certainly today a very competitive technology, a, a very economic one, a cleaner one than uh, others. Uh, but, you know, we still have quite a bit of coal in our fleet, as does the U.S., and um, it's something that we as a company um, have set goals to reduce our carbon footprint quite significantly, uh, voluntarily, I should say, uh, you know, in the next uh, coming decades. And it's something that will require uh, certainly entrepreneurship on, on our part uh, and innovations. Um, and we certainly would look to uh, folks like yourselves for ideas and uh, collaborations and partnerships to, to get there. Um, and I think one of the things that um, I tell people in energy, they say, well, what do you do? What, do you, what does energy do? Um, certain, you know, apart from the business model of being an owner, operator, service provider, uh, we all are, look to be a comprehensive technology company. Um, I, we do everything from rooftop solar today to uh, we have a nuclear power plant. Uh, and so with that, then we're looking to transform that diversity, that scope into a wide range of services, not just kicking out megawatt hours, but providing energy management services, uh, and not just electricity, but also heat um, and electric vehicle charging. Um, you know, getting into technology like fuel cells, uh, thermal and uh, electrical energy storage, demand response. Um, you know, at the level of both the commercial building and even the home. Um, it's something where we want to be a total energy solution to uh, customers' 
not just from our traditional partners, the uh, investor-owned utilities, uh, the wholesale side, but folks like yourselves who may be looking to reduce your energy bills or manage costs. Um, something we're particularly proud of is a uh, hospital in Princeton, New Jersey, um, where we installed uh, a range of technologies, including uh, combined heat and power that provides the, the uh, hospital with round-the-clock heating and cooling and electricity, uh, thermal energy storage to allow it to manage um, its, its needs on hot days, um, and then with that technology to allow the, the hospital, when uh, power is expensive out in New Jersey, to sell back to the grid. Um, and that's something we can manage centrally and um, would we'll look to do more of these in the future. Um, and we, it's all tied together, it's all integrated. Uh, this is sort of, this is, we believe, the future of uh, customer sited energy. Um, and energy definitely wants to be a part of that. Um, so, stop there. We we'll certainly don't want to uh, take up any more of the professor's time, but um, we're happy to be here and uh, looking forward to the presentation. Thank you.